Hey everybody, it's Chris Nichols here from the Camera Store TV and we've got an impromptu little short here because we got our hands on a pre-production FS5 just to take a look at. And you know, first impression on this camera is just the handling of it is excellent. So small, so light. I mean, this camera's got a lot going for it. And you can make it even smaller. You know, for you people who want to throw this on a gimbal, you can take off this handle, you can take off the audio handle on top, and you now just have a small package that you can easily float. Other stuff that I really like here, even when you take off all that stuff, we still have one XLR port here, so you can still do good reference audio. Also, it looks like an FS7, but shrunk down here. Great controls, slow and quick, audio levels. I'm gonna talk about this variable iris and ND filter. This is very, very cool, but very familiar territory here with the dials. Overall, the camera's light, it handles well. I also like with the viewfinder here, we can unscrew this viewfinder, this OLED, and put it anywhere on any of these quarter inch mounts. So you can customize how you want this camera to feel and how you want it to uh, operate. Now inside this camera, we've got a lot of power packed in. We've got the same sensor as the FS7, but the processor here has been upgraded, does some cool stuff. First off, when it comes to slow-mo, we can do 240 frames per second at 1080, eight seconds sort of run time. We've also found that the menus operate way quicker, and that's a fantastic thing. You don't have that lag that you used to have. This ND filter is pretty awesome. Now, we've got one, two, and three as presets. We can customize what those are, but it works in a totally different way. This guy is using liquid crystal display here to do our variable ND, and as I play with it here, I can actually change that strength, whether I go whatever I want to do, completely variable, or customize my presets. I've got that control. Now, of course, this camera is downscaled, and in comparison, the codec has changed a little bit as well. You are getting basically 4K at 4208 bit. But don't fret too badly. You can always go, if you need more color space, to a 1080 file at 10 bit 422, which is fantastic. And you can also output that through the SDI out full 4K. 10-bit 422 as well to an external recorder. You can even output RAW. And you know, one of the benefits of having this sort of codec that this camera has is that we can now go to dual SD card slot. Saves you a ton of money. It's a really convenient source for your media. This camera is going to be really awesome. We cannot wait to get our hands on a full production version of it, and we will have a big review for you guys. So stay tuned. Keep watching. We'll see you soon.